Hello, welcome back to CSC263 Database Management Systems at Adelphi University. Today is the, uh, this is the last video in our uh, series about the Structured Query Language, SQL. In the previous videos, we looked at all different um, operations for data retrieval. Um, we looked at how to retrieve data from a single relation. And we talked about how to then enrich that retrieval using aggregate operations. In the previous video, we talked about how to create queries that retrieve data by spanning multiple uh, tables and relations using um, join operators or uh, a Cartesian product with a selection. In this video, um, we'll talk about a different way to get that accomplished, um, but um, and that's through the use of subqueries. Subqueries can be do can do a lot more than just mimic the behavior of um, joins. Um, some people find them more intuitive than using joins; others do not. Um, it's not always the most efficient way to do um, querying at first glance, but at the same time, you know, this is what the query optimizer is for. Um, the query optimizer of a database management system should be looking at your query and seeing if the way that you pr um, propose it is indeed the most efficient way um, to execute it. Um, either way, what we'll be looking at is that um, sub-query uh, capability. First, we'll look at the in operator and that we can use to basically link select questions, uh, select queries together. We'll see how we can um, insert data into a new relation uh, using sub-queries. And we'll look at um, the way that um, subqueries can be used to replace the name of a relation. Uh, three different scenarios um, in which we can use subqueries to our benefit. The first use of subqueries is when we're starting to um, think about matching a value in our query against multiple values. More specifically, um, let's take a look at the query here select student ID from grades where grade in C minus C or C plus. The in keyword is a very useful one here because I can just list out the range of values that I am willing to take and the in operator will match any uh, tuple um, in which the grade matches any of those values. Now this is not a subquery, this is just a range of values where it becomes interesting is that I am now able to replace that list of values with another query. And that uh, makes it um, more interesting in query building. Let's develop a query that is going to answer the question, what are the email addresses of students who received an A in CSC 263? We know how to do that. We can grab the A from the grades table, perform an inner join with the students table on their common attributes, which is the student ID, and then just get our answers. But let's solve this differently. First, oops, I'm already in my SQL. Start um, by developing a query of the student IDs of all of the students who received an A in CSC 263. So that would be select student ID from grades, where grade equals A and course ID equals 263. That gives us this answer. Now, in the previous exercise, we used inner joints to solve this, but let's do it differently and use this subquery mechanism with the in operator. We can go select email from students, where student ID, sorry, so where ID in, open parentheses, close parentheses. Now this is no longer the end of the query, so the semicolon moves to here. And that is all we have to do. Now let's take a closer look. Stud ID is the name of the field in grades where in students that field is called ID. This will work even if there is no foreign key relationship established between the two tables. As long as the field that is returned here 
has the same data type as the field returns there. Here is our answer. Let's see if we can get an answer to the question um, listed here. What are the IDs of all students whose grade is below the average for CSC 263 in the fall of 2019? Again, what we'll have to realize is that we see two questions here. The first question is, what is the average for CSC 263 in the fall of 2019? And then the second question is, what are the IDs of those students who scored less than that particular value in their same term, the fall of 2019, for CSC 263? So let's go figure this out. We know how to use the aggregate function, so we can just go select the average of the grade points. Remember, we have our updated uh, schema uh, from grades, um, which we need to inner join um, with grade points. Grade points on grades.grade equals grade points.grade. Um, but we want to make sure that we limit that to only that where the term is fall 2019 and the course ID is 263. So that's the average right there. So this is going to function as our sub query. So let's go build a query. Well, let's first clean this up a little bit. Okay, so what we have here will return a single value, um, which um, we can work around. Now, the next question is, what are the IDs of all students? So we're looking for select student ID um, from grades where, where what? Well, where the points that they received is greater than that average that we just collected, except that, of course, these grades um, by themselves don't have what we need. So we need to make sure we repeat this join operation um, and that we also limit it just to the students in the term equals fall 2019 and the course ID is 263 but we have uh, a third constraint which is that these points must be greater than this average that we are calculating here. And the trick is just put some parentheses around it. And to make me happy, indent. And then this semicolon can go. Let's see if we got this right the first time. We did. Now it doesn't return anything, and that makes sense. Oh, in part because I have my point thing going in the wrong direction. So what's the student ID from the grades where the term is that and the points are less than the average points? Now notice that if there are no points, this doesn't ma uh, match because the average we saw was four. Um, and we see that this one here is an F, but there's no value for the F. So let's go see if we can fix that. Insert into grade points, grade and points and values f and zero. Hopefully now it does return the value student ID equals one. That's the only student who scored below the average for that course in that semester. So again, this looks like a really scary query when you look at it at first glance, but let's take it apart again, just to be on the safe side. This here is a subquery. And that means that you can read it completely by itself. It's going to return a single value uh, from the grades table, um, which is married to the grade points table. Um, and we want to make sure that we only calculate the average for course 263 in fall 2019. And then this query by itself is also not very difficult. It's just comparing who has less points than some value here. And that some value is provided by the subquery. Let's consider another situation. All students who have earned 120 or more credits will become alumni. Now, if we look at the students table, uh, we see that it has the ID number, last name, first name, and email. 
We could add a field there that says, okay, what kind of student is this? Is this an alum or a current student? But in this case, we want to make sure that we freeze the student record at the moment on graduation so that when the student ever comes back um, and asks for a transcript, the transcript will be issued in the name that was on record when the student graduated. And that means that we probably want to create a second table called alums, uh, which mim mimics all the fields, but that isn't updated uh, at the same time as the student's table is. You know, going forward, we'll update the alums table, but for transcripts, we'll still come back to the student's one. Now, we could do that manually, and we can, um, because if we start looking at the query to figure out you know, who has 120 credits or more, we can look back at the grades table, and we'll see that I added a credits field there. And knowing that, it becomes fairly simple, because now we can just ask for some credits um, and student ID. From what? Well, from students in a join on grades again uh, on what well we know that we know that students dot start id equals grades no students dot id equals um, grades dot start id and we're going to group by student id because that's who we're computing with it's 120 credits per student but only those um, where the sum of the credits is greater or equal than 120. Well, there's none now, but that's okay. Let's take a closer look at this query. In this case, I'm listing the sum of the credits in the output, but I really don't care about it for the output. So let's get rid of it. And all we have are student IDs in the output now. Again, no, no rows, but that's okay. So, what are we going to do? Well, we could do this. Select ID, last, first, email from students, where ID in this. So it's basically the same query twice. First to get the aggregate data out and then to get the individual fields out. But now a very interesting trick would be the alums table has the same fields as the students table. Students. Um, so SQL has a nice trick for this. We can do this. Insert into alums and just let it go. Select ID, etc. Zero, zero. Of course, there were no hits in the select, so there could now be no hits from the insert. <clears throat> but this is not a form of a subquery, especially if we write it a little bit differently, like that. Now, we don't need to specify the values, we don't keyword, we don't need to spell the name of the columns out. All of this will come straight out of this query. So here we have it, another example of how to use select queries combined with insert keys queries using two different types of subqueries. And with that, we have reached the end of the videos talking about the SQL language. In this last video, we looked at subqueries and see how they can sometimes help us answer questions that we otherwise wouldn't be able to answer. And in other situations, they provide us a different way of writing a query, then we don't have to um, rely on subqueries on uh, joins. Lastly, we can use subqueries to just make our lives a little easier now and then. In these last couple of videos, we've talked about SQL fairly extensively. We, of course, will practice with this in class quite a bit. Um, I expect that we will not finish this in one week. Um, but at least we now have a pretty good understanding of what the language looks like that we use to interact with our database. Next, of course, the question becomes, well, if we know how to interact with the database and the database management system in particular, how can we use that in developing our own programs? And that's the topic of our next video.